When a mate of mine told me about a billabong he found, I had to go and see if I could find it. So one weekend I drove out, fished it by myself. Following weekend, I told a mate of mine, Jeff, all about it. So we both went out there and fished it. And we worked out a couple of techniques and a few lures that really worked in the freshwater billabongs of Cape York, because they're not the easiest things to fish. So at the end of this video, we're gonna show all the lures and techniques and stuff that we use. But check this out. This is about two fishing trips and it's an adventure to get in there. One of the trips I get caught in a bushfire trying to get out, but the second trip, Jeff tries to get his first ever Saratoga. Just have a look at this. I'm, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the drone up and have a fly around because I can have a look at the uh, billabong uh, while I'm there. But um, it looks deep and it looks looks really fishy, so it looks beautiful too. And as usual, the boat, absolute mud bath. Good little trick when you're driving the dirt roads because there's so much dust being thrown up. I've been driving dirt roads for a couple of hours. I've put tape around the water inlet on the outboard here, but really important, you've got to remember to take that tape off because if you don't, obviously no water's going to go through your engine and you cook your engine. So on the handle here, I've got tape on the handle as well. So if I go to start the engine and there's tape on the handle, it'll prompt me to remember to rip the tape off the, uh, the water inlet. So I've been for a bit of a scour around. I've had the sounder running. I've put the drone up and had a look at this uh, billabong. It goes for about a kilometre or two, so it's quite large and really deep in sections, up to nine metres deep. But the edges are really super snaggy and there's other shallow bits that are full of lily pads. So for the lily pad areas, I've got a frog and I'll throw him into the lily pads and I'll work him out. And for the deep snaggy edges, I've got a deep diving big barrel lure. And it'll dive down to about two meters deep, which should see me dancing over the top of some of the timber. So you can see as we cruise through the billabong, you can see that all these branches of trees that are just underneath the surface. So I've been working a hard body just above these trees that goes down to about one or two meters, because we're in three meters of water and that tree's just under the surface, about a meter under the surface. And these trees here, or little shrubs or whatever they are, that. Have got a lot they'd have a lot of growth and stuff like that growing off them would all be about two two and a half meters you can see we've fallen into a hole of six meters now and we've still got plenty of trees and stuff on the bottom so there's so much structure As beautiful as this place is, there's bird life everywhere, and I've got a lot of interest from archer fish, but I've seen no sooty grunter, no Saratoga, uh, definitely no barra. Uh, you sometimes even get tarpon in these billabongs, but uh, <laughs> casting lures for hours. And what are we doing? Oh, it's a barra. That is a, a billabong barra, it's quite sil silver. And she's worked hard for it. <laughs> oh mate. I found a big hole 12 metres deep and it is full, absolutely full of bait fish. There's got to be some predators in there surely. Look at it all.
absolutely always amazes me that you always get tarp on in these billaboxes. Dirty old catfish. This is better than I am. And while it's been a tough day, <laughs> I've got a barra and a toga. So I can't complain. <laughs> and there's that little spinner blade in there. You know what, I tried so many lures and I've been throwing hard bodies and plastics and it's funny, you know, you just change to one lure and your luck turns around. That's a little toga. Yeah. Oh, that's another good fish. <laughs> These arches, I've got a heap of them. It's proven to be the billabong of a thousand casts because I've been casting all day. And when you get a nice toga like that, it makes it all worthwhile. Look at that. They are just a stunning fish, like a big snake. They're so, so flexible. And uh, that's why you can't eat them. They're absolutely full of bones. I thought I had a hard time getting into the uh, billabong. I haven't had an even harder time getting out because uh, there's a bushfire. Just have to wait out a bit of this, uh, this fire. Up ahead, the visibility is zero and there's uh, the flames are quite large. So uh, the wind's blowing that way. <laughs> so this section of the road's already burned. So I know it's going to be pretty safe in a little while, but. Uh, I'm going to give a little bit of time because those flames are huge and the last thing I want to do is get caught in the middle of all that. Everyone to know this bloke, you've watched any videos before? 
He hasn't caught a Saratoga though, so I told him I was here last weekend catching toga. He got jealous. I felt sorry for him. Dragged him in today and we're going to catch some toga. We're going to try a few different techniques. Going to throw some plastics, throw some bladed lures, hard bodies, all sorts of stuff and work out how to catch them. So it should be a bit of fun. It's taken us, well it's taken me two trips actually, and taken us most of the day to work out. There's no toga hanging around the lily pads where we thought that they'd be. I was casting frogs up there last weekend when I was here. Jeff and I worked them pretty hard, but all these little edges that have got uh, little bushes and stuff on them, uh, snags, uh, we've fucked a few toga out of them. And we've stopped and found big snags in the middle of the river that have come up out of seven metres of water to sit up about just one or two metres under the surface. And we've pulled um, one, blended one barrel out of them and dropped a couple of barrel out of them. So, um, well, we've been chasing toga. You can't help yourself when you see a snag that good. You've got to throw lures at it for barrow, but... Oh, it's a good barrel. Oh, it's dropped. Oh, it's a good barrel. <laughs> oh, look at that for a barrel. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> We got, uh, well, we not that we were sick of catching togas, but we found a spot in the billabong that had some big snags coming out of about eight metres of water. And that is a cracking barra. So we decided to dent some hard bodies over the snags. <laughs> I'm really happy with that. That's a good fish. That's our first toga. Good day. First toga for the day. <laughs> Any little fella? A geez, they're a good sport fish. Yep, toga. No oh, toga, another one. Ooh, yeah. Fella, but that's all right. That's Absolutely without doubt, one of my favourite sport fish. Even though these guys, the last two guys, well, this one and the last one's only little, they're just beautiful. So aggressive, look at that mouth. Eyes pointing up, mouth pointing up, ready to pounce. <laughs> oh, another toga! <laughs> not, a, not a little fella, but that's all right. No, it's not too bad. Oh yeah. Look, once again, another little guy, but uh, just beautiful fishes. I love the colour in these things. This guy's just pink and he's got a bit of purple and blue and green. We're about to head home. We've come back to where we've got a few togas this morning. And Jeff's first toga, you're gonna to see if you can hook up. See what the great guy. Toga in here for sure. They had a bite just back there that looked like a toga. As soon as it surface, it shot off to the side and then you stretched it. It's a toga. It's a toga. Oh, oh stop it. <laughs> he pants me. That was a bit of fun, but we specifically came to hit some Saratoga today, and uh, while we got four, um, unfortunately Jeff didn't get any of them. We did get a nice barrow and dropped a real big barrow on some of the timber as well, but uh, a little bit of fun. It is a hard place to fish. It's not a, it's 
you just can't come to this billabong and throw a lure in and catch a fish. And I call it the billabong of a thousand casts because it's really difficult to fish as Jeff found out today, but it's a lot of fun. So that shows you how tough these billabongs can be to fish. I spent two full days there, got a handful of fish. Poor old Jeff, who's a really good fisherman, wasn't even able to get a toga himself. So, but we'll get back out there and get Jeff a toga for sure. But look, the rods that we use, once again, just really like spin gear. Once again, this is a, like a two to five kilo or three to five kilo spin stick. It's got the smallest of the Alby spin reels on it. So a little light spin outfit like this is fantastic. Eight pound line. It's got a 20 pound leader just because the Saratoga as well as the Barra have a really hard raspy mouth that they wear through leaders pretty quick. One thing I did do on that light spin rod that got me a few fish was I put a little spin blade on it and you can see here, this one is a beetle spin that's just attached to a jig head. I had a jig head with a blade on it, and um, I forget the name of it, I think they're actually just called blades, but I actually ran out, I lost a few to some snags, so I went to this attachment one. And look, just how you rig them up, make sure the hook, as you can see here, the hook is pointing up towards the blade, because how they'll, they'll swim through the water is just like this, with the toe point up where my fingers are, and that blade will spin, so that hook needs to sit up, which makes it really snag resistant. If you got it the other way, you'll get less bites or, or less hookups anyway, and you get more snags. So just make sure you set them up right. And when we were chasing the barra, the barra was sitting on snags that were pushing up towards the one to two meters of water. And so the, bay, the, the snag might have been in six meters of water, but because the tree was so big, it's sitting up around that two meters. So I went for a deep diving barra lure. Barra casting gear, so um, a barra rod, a bait casting rod, and this is the Alvi Orbiter bait caster. It's the Alvi Orbiter rod, so it's a nice, easy setup. But anything like this, make sure your rod's got a bit of grunt in it. Um, so around about that 10 kilo, 